electrolytes. Okay, as we have seen in sodium chloride, it is having positive and negative kind of charged particles. Those substances which conduct electricity either in molten state or in aqueous state, we will call them electrolytes. Okay, all ionic compounds that is electrovalent compounds will be forming charged particles that is positive and negative ions. So, they all will be electrolytes. Okay, so, all ionic compounds will be electrolytes either in the molten state or in the aqueous state. But, if they are covalent compounds, okay, for example, if I am considering organic compounds like methane, that is CH4, even carbon tetrachloride, that is CCl4, all these are covalent compounds, they do not form ions and therefore, they will be non-electrolytes. Okay. Now, again, electrolytes, depending upon how many ions or in what percentage they form ions, we will classify them as strong electrolytes. Okay. Or weak electrolytes. It depends on to how much extent these ions split up. If I am having sodium chloride, and if it is dissolved in water that is in aqueous state, the separation is almost 100 percent. It means out of 100 molecules of NaCl, almost 100 of them or say 99 of them will get splitted up into Na plus and Cl minus. So, the splitting is almost complete. Therefore, this will come in the category of strong electrolytes. These all examples of covalent compounds, their splitting is almost 0 percent. There are no charged particles in it because they are covalent compounds. So, they will be not conducting electricity at all. So, we will call them non-electrolytes. While there are some compounds like ammonium hydroxide, then acetic acid, Here the splitting is to a smaller extent, say example 5 percent. It means if I am having 100 molecules of ammonium hydroxide, then 5 of them will split up and 95 of them will remain together. So, few amount of few number of ions are there, therefore they will be coming out weak electrolytes. Okay.